Yes. And as an imam, you really have a responsibility that's different than any member. If people look up to you, you're a role model, Absolutely. and you, when you sign into something that is kind of iffy and kind of uh, not clear and not transparent and all of that, people will take your word for it. People will, uh, I don't know when you went to Washington, were you actually invite, you know, it feels to me you guys standing there like you've been summoned there. <laughs> and it's not really an invitation. Were you forced to go? There is no force. It's all through community uh, discussions and we were absolutely convinced and up to this point we can walk out anytime. There's nothing, you know, holding anybody's hand or tying anybody's hand. So it is, uh, it's absolutely something that we believe we have a role to play. We're going to also critique the government that we don't want uh, you know, government, uh, you know, outreach and over, you know, uh, to go overboard with people's civil rights and civil liberties. And we're also telling the whole world, we're telling the larger community that uh, there are issues, very difficult issues. It's not a, you know, a zero sum that somebody wins and if somebody loses, <laughs> you know, this is, yeah. this is all our issues. Yes. So just how do we work from this very difficult situation? And again, some of the critiques that came was to separate the, the funding. We are looking, yes, def definitely uh, foundations and other uh, you know, civil organizations and nonprofits also are going to help build these organizations. So it's not that we're directly getting uh, this funding is coming directly from... Well, yeah, from, it, it, from, it's from a profit you know, yeah. you give you some money, they expect something. Of course, but this is more for community building, for, for community building, sure. for networking, for other things. Uh, Jobs, when, when, when employment, education. How much of this is yes. uh, driven by money? You know, you know, most of the foundation are kind of uh, pressed for money. I mean, when you, when you are pressed for money, underfunded, you know, uh, when somebody offers you money, it's very lowering. How much of I, those, uh, I, is, uh, I'm, I'm doing it to help the community as well? I, I, I don't think money is a big factor. I mean, this community, uh, not our other Muslims, but even the Somalis alone, whom this project is addressing primarily. We have been here 23 years. We are not that rich a community, but we are a community that has dignity, has high you know, self-reliance, has independence. So um, money has never been a factor that really you know, lowered our community or made us to you know, sell our values. We do have values, Kamal Hassan. our religious values, and we're definitely going to stand up for our rights and for our... So, so it's just a way of... Uh, there are so many foundations. Bring these resources together, yeah, and, 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 and necessary, not necessarily the funding, to me in particular, is not the goal. It's more solving this problem. Yeah, but the people who are giving you the money, they expect something. Of course, they expect not necessarily... Concrete. Not, yeah, of course, that concrete will be integration. If our youth get the opportunity for jobs and for Kamal education and they move up in the, 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 the job skill, then they will feel better and they'll be, it will be... Uh, uh, yeah. easy for well, which is a long term yeah, and yeah, hard to measure too. Absolutely. Kamal Hassan, probably you know him. Sure. He was he signed he signed off on the program CBE. Sure. Now uh, he said he cannot do it anymore. Why would the government make it easy for those guys to do that? I mean, he's blaming the government that facilitated the passport. And I mean, he's talking about a bunch of kids. You know, these kids needs help. Not they don't need entrapment. They don't need to spend the rest of their life in, in prison. So. Why would the government uh, come up to say, stand their hand, I'm going to give you money, and behind your back they're arresting kids that they need to be, you know. <coughs> uh, and then you have a paid informant. That's, that's another issue. When you have a paid informant, you, I mean, it's kind of, you discredited the information and entrapment there. I mean, taping them and all. So this is all evidence that shows the intention of those law enforcement. No, definitely. Of course, you know that right now, especially in the country as a whole, the issue of uh, intelligence gathering and, of course, the NSA issue was just a few yeah. yes, have right. said that it's, it's illegal. It's not just the Somali, it's and uh, and everybody. And, then, and there are lots of also conspiracy theories also, even you were hearing the stories in, uh, in Texas, uh, that, that kind of, uh, I don't know if you heard about that story that about conspiracy theories, the federal government. So in a, when the environment is really environment of mistrust and heightened uh, fear, uh, of course, any kind of situation like this will create <coughs> and reinforce those fears. 
So that's why the government also needs to be clear that if they want you know, community partnership and they want issues to be solved by the community, which government is saying at all levels, they need to also but not resort to... Uh, because it to, backfired. To spying. Yes, they should backfired. Not. You have yeah. 50 organizations signed on, now they are signing off. No, there are differences of opinion. I know, of the, but the issue, you're yes. talking about quantitative analysis. Right. I mean, there are you gain 50, you lost 60. Right. I mean, there are differences. I still, you know, we, we can still hopefully rectify well, the situation. Know, uh, but uh, the young people, again, they're innocent until proven guilty. Um, as far as I know, they are good kids. And even again, something for the for the courts and for the larger system also to consider. Is it would going you, to solve to throw, yeah, to throw this case in jail of long term? Yeah, sure. Is that also that's another angle that we need to look yeah. at. That systemically, we should not, uh, you know, we should really look at the whole, you know, solution and not necessarily. Wouldn't you be concerned yeah. that this is really focused on the Somali community? I mean, there is a lot of people, a lot of gang problem. There's a lot of people go to Israel and fight with a terrorist organization there, and they come back here. We don't have a program for that. I'd be very worried about how many people went to Israel, fought with the IDF, fought with other, even terrorist organizations that, according to the State Department, are terrorist organization, uh, killing Arabs, killing Palestinians, and they come back. They have American passport. I'm worried about that because they look like everybody. They are my neighbor. They are my... So, why, why can't we demand, which I did, and they are not even addressing that, and I invited uh, Andrew Logan, and he is uh, turning it down, and he's not coming to talk to us about those questions. Sure. So this is an issue also, sure. why this is putting the spotlight on Muslim, and in particular on the Somali community. Definitely, I mean, systemic issues need systemic solutions for see, larger, yeah. you know, larger uh, collaboration among the you know, different stakeholders, the civil rights groups, and the, the different communities. But at the same time, Ahmed, remember, in our state and in society in general, government or, or organizations supporting a specific ethnic group is not something new. Right in the Twins, we have the Hmong community, we have the Latino community, we have the African American community. We are aware of thousands of projects or many projects that communities have received either in the neighborhood where they live or uh, for specific uh, programs. So I think this is just one of those. We are the least community that served when it comes to <laughs> focus on, I mean, how many, how many projects that are Latino-based that are happening? How many projects that are African-American-based? So in a way, I think- but it's, uh, not, it's not a, a terrorist-based uh, relationship or found, you know, kind of uh, uh, between the Hmong and, uh, and, you know, it's not, it's not a terrorist-based, like what, that's what we're talking about. I mean, we're, yeah, I mean, we're, going, we're going to separate. We don't want to, again, we don't want profiling. We don't want this community to be seen as right. terrorists. Well, even, good the luck with that. even the numbers are very few and very limited, so. Well, why a few, how many, how many Somali went to? I mean, a few, you have a, you yeah, know, yeah, how many Somali? There are there few. There yeah, are few. very few. Probably more Western white went to fight with ISIS than Somali, you know, from Europe and everywhere. Well, we don't have a program about this, this brat young kid that living in the suburb that making bob in the garage, whatever. How about uh, Norm Coleman and, you know, in the land of 10,000 uh, terrorists? Why would a newspaper, I mean, I know it's a free press or anything. You wrote a huge article in the Min Post about uh, this particular issue that uh, we have a Somali uh, t a terrorist problem and, uh, and uh, he is, uh, you know, think that this is a Somali problem. I think it's unfortunate that Senator Coleman, uh, having served he in the state, a lot of everybody. A lot of, uh, everybody should take that position. So again, that's one of the other side that if we want this to be a solution that we're all part of, um, politicians should also use it as a stepping stone. We also that that should not happen, and that should not be used. You know, the fear uh, factor or scaring people to get votes or to mobilize people to their own side. Again, it is problems that we have to solve together, you know, it affects all of us as Minnesotans. We want the best for our community. So again, that statement from Senator Coleman is really out of place and unfortunate. So again, that's the other point that we need, want to point is out. Is the assumption right? really in those politician law enforcement, the assumption is uh, uh, the Somali or the Muslim community are the most likely uh, community where the Terrorists are going to come. What is the assumption there? I mean, they, they must, it, they, it, they it, must it, operate it, it, on just, a certain it's just, assumption. It's just fear. It's just fear, and, you know, that, that's what it is. Because 
you know, Muslims are not new neither to this state nor to the country as a whole. It's a large, vibrant community. Yeah, diverse. Very well educated, very diverse, contributing factors. Hundreds on, you know, uh, or thousands of students in the school system, uh, neighborhoods that we have, you know, very peaceful. So um, it's. Uh, it, it, it's, there's no real reason to fear our Muslim neighbors. How Again, the, uh, especially when you're in the schools and you see the exactly. neighborhoods, how everybody gets along together. So, so uh, uh, officials should not create unnecessary <laughs> divisions or tension. We have come a long you way. Know, I can imagine. The, the tolerance and the, you know, the, the, the working together of this is, is a good model. Sounds very good. So we should not get in the way yeah. and, and divide the government and the people, nor the different communities within our state. I can imagine if you are a school teacher or an imam or whatever, a school teacher, white teacher or whatever, and you see some Somali uh, acting out and saying, you know, different things. I mean, what's the role of the culture aspect of that? Because for a white suburban uh, white uh, teacher uh, to do with uh, young African Americans. Right. The, that's why we have police brutality because of this idea those people are criminal, those people are prone to terrorism because uh, culturally they express themselves and, differently. And that's where cultural bridging, you know, cultural education, diversity, sensitivity trainings, which we have been doing for years and which many schools are doing, that will reduce these misunderstandings. Again, culture and sign signals or the emotions or emotions that yeah. you make, all of those do carry meanings. So therefore, education goes both ways. Our communities are learning, you know, how the system works and what's some of the values of the, of the, of the larger community. At the same time, larger communities are learning our own way. So whether it's religion, whether it's culture, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, different practices, and we have come a long way, and so, and what, so what's we, next we just now? have to keep working on that. What's thing. next now for this? Uh, well, the project is still uh, it's going to be table? it's on the table. Uh, we hopefully will be able to, you know, move most of the you know the, uh, the resources will be through the nonprofit sector and the um, foundations, and you know through those those, and also re get written assurance also from the U.S. Attorney's Office that. Uh, there will be transparency, and this will not be used in, for, for intelligence gathering or for surveillance. And we are making public the media to hold the government accountable. If it fails, President Obama's name and you know all the other leaders' <laughs> names also you know <laughs> will be there, the first one out there. So <laughs> we will we will uh, will hold the government accountable. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. President. I know it's a tough uh, things, and I know. Uh, uh, you have a role in it, and it's not going to end anytime soon. For so wish you luck, uh, Brother Abdul Salam uh, Adam, the chairman of the board of Islamic Civic Society, he is really on the midst and forefront of dealing with uh, the issue of entrapment, the issue of the relationship between law enforcement and the Somali community. And uh, this is not going to go away. We'll see you next week. Salam alaikum, and God bless you all. Thank you.